Hello and welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. It's here. This is it. This is the new pride and joy. I am exhausted. I've literally been at this all day. If you see the last video where I showed the old audio PC and talked about the parts and the bits, that was this morning. That was probably about lunchtime. It's now gone 10 o'clock tonight and I've literally just finished moving, obviously porting from one chassis really to the new chassis and sorting everything out, putting our new bits in here, you know, a new JCAT parts and obviously this is the jcat 400 watt linear power supplier so I, I gotta say i'm really happy with how it's gone I'm really happy that the build's gone however until you fire everything up you know you kind of anyone who's ever built a computer before you do everything you can you keep everything neat and tidy you're careful you're really careful about until you turn it on that first time and everything's working really you, you know you, you, you might, you've got no, you're not even master of your own destiny your heart's in your mouth to a degree especially with something like this so yeah really happy with how it's gone but people wanted me to excuse me people wanted me to show you what i did now that's been really difficult because it's been so long i've been having problems with the lights i use which are battery powered they've been sort of running out of battery and i've been trying to do bits concentrate on what i'm doing and obviously film at the same time so i filmed as much as i can but i'll just quickly run through what i did obviously i took all the parts out of the old pc literally stripped it back down to all its individual components, took the motherboard out of that. Now, when I put, lined up the motherboard with the new chassis, it, at first I couldn't work out what was going on. I couldn't line up the spacers with the motherboard holes. And I, I was scratching my head and I took the chassis apart and realized afterwards that basically I had to change the spacers over to a different location, obviously, and I, I've obviously filmed that. So I think that's something to bear in mind. Now, generally, you're probably going to be doing a new build. So you're going to have the motherboard there. Just make sure you sort of, you know, line the motherboard up with the chassis and put the spaces where you need them. Obviously, I didn't have that luxury, so I probably wasted an hour just putting it, doing it all once, taking it all apart and putting it all back together. So I think that's something to bear in mind. So before I put anything in, before the motherboard went in, obviously you always start with the motherboard. Before that went in, I lined the bottom of the chassis with the grey material stuff, which I showed obviously in the last video, which is a, which is a product made by 3M, which sadly you can't buy anymore. It's a product with a, a code called AB5100S. Now it's a, a non-conductive, I think magnetic type material that is non-magnetic. Basically, it's just a soak or or a drain or an absorber of high frequency noise, but a really high powerful one. But it also has the benefit because it's thick and because it's dense and it's a little bit flexible, it's really good at sucking up vibrations and stuff as well. So I lined the bottom of the chassis with it. I've actually super glued some to the top of the chassis because we had a little bit of resonance. We've still got a bit, but it's a hell of a lot less now than what we had. I might even look to put some more on that in the future, we'll see. So that's got a dual benefit, as I say, it's gonna absorb any high frequency noise that's in this chassis, which is gonna be a lot because of the nature of the beast of what we're working with here. And it's also helped with dampening down the resonance of the chassis as well. So a win, win. So that's the first thing I did. Then I installed the motherboard. Obviously the CPU was already on there and the RAM and everything was obviously on, the, on there from before. So installed the motherboard. Then we needed to install our cooler. Now I've got to say, the cooler, the CPU cooler for this JCAT product is absolutely fantastic. You've got that massive great big copper block, which is really high quality. I've built loads of PCs. That one's really heavy, really well made. So I installed that onto the CPU, which actually is pretty easy. You literally just kind of line it up. This is an Intel, so it's easy. You literally just line it up. You do four screws up. Now I've always done my screws up corners to corner. So one corner, then the opposite corner, that's how I did it up. Not forgetting, obviously, I applied some tim, which is like thermal compound, only a little blob in the center of the CPU. Applied that, and obviously, then you know, tightened down. We've then got eight heat pipes, and this is the really clever bit about this design. And there's a few other designs out there like it. It's the way of calling the CPU. So we've actually got eight heat pipes which run from the top of the CPU to this, to the basically to the, the side of the chassis here, where we've got these cooling fins. Now. You can make them look really neat and have it all lined up perfectly, but to be honest, I don't see as it really makes a difference and I knew I had so much to do. So I literally just grabbed them, got them all to fit nice, stuck them all on. You'll see in the video that obviously I applied thermal compound to the block where you sit the, the heat pipes and also to the side 
off the chassis where the heat pipes sit. Now I made a bit of a mess of that. Didn't quite do it in the right place because I wasn't really paying attention. So I'd say to anybody, when you're taking this project on, this is a long project. It's going to take a long, yeah, it's going to take a lot of time. Take your time and do it neat. But obviously, when you're trying to do it and you're trying to film and trying to get it all done in a day, so you can start getting this warmed up, you know, start getting it some time, some hours put on it. You know, I was just kind of getting stuck in. So yeah, we did that. Then I had to little. Then I had to think about where I was going to start placing things because there's two SSDs in this chassis, and with this size motherboard, there wasn't a huge amount of space. And I've had this before where I installed one SSD facing one way, another SSD facing the same way, and it's really awkward then trying to get the yeah, serial 88 cables and stuff in, especially when you're using aftermarket ones. So luckily, or really part of this design, which is really clever, you've got like a raised section. So I installed the main operating system OS uh, SSD facing this way, and I was able to raise up a section here, and our storage music SSD now faces back this way, but it's higher. Having that higher just meant there was nice cable runs for having, obviously, a serial ATA cable to come out to feed to our optical drive that we do our CD ripping with, but also meant we could feed the cables underneath, make it sort of reasonably tidy in here. So I really like that aspect of the design. I, to be honest, I didn't think I was going to use it, but actually in practice, it's like, well, getting the SSD up just means there's now space to do it for our cable runs and stuff. So obviously really happy with that. One other thing that was a little bit fiddly was installing the power section. So what's clever about this chassis and this power supply design is that we have this the straight ATX power. So we have our 12 pin for a motherboard and our eight pin or four pin for our CPU, which connects straight to the back of the chassis and from the chassis connects straight into our motherboard. So that was all simple enough, but it took me about five goes to get it all to sit nice and fit nice and stuff. But the actual end result is a really clean install. So I'm really happy with that. I'm sure that's going to work fantastic. And as I already mentioned, that is definitely the best design. The other fiddly thing I found is when I was installing our cards, we've got our JCAP USB card, the Femto USB card. I found basically you need to, it comes with two headers and you need to put the small header on well actually you don't actually I found it easier not to put the header on now with the header on I just found it really tight I couldn't quite get it to fit in the chassis so what I did I took the header off or the kind of the faceplate off installed the card put the faceplate in and then all I could do was screw the top one up and that was about the best that I could do but by the time it's all fixed in there nice and tight I'm happy with how that is. And then I installed the JCAT Net Femto card up high, and then we used a HD Plex riser cable to connect to that. Now that's a really floppy cable, but I was able to bend that up and over and do actually quite a neat job. 
And then after that, I've got more of our 3M AB5100S, and I've run that round pretty much everywhere to cover as much of everything as I can. Now, some of the cables they use, these cables here that you can see, these are these power our SSDs. Now, this out sheath here, it's not just gold because I want it to be bling, that is actually part of the sc screen, obviously, for this. this is actually conductive material, so you need to be careful, obviously, with this. These really should have a cover over them, but I didn't get that far when I made these cables. So, what I've had to do is kind of be clever with that and box clever and keep it all neat and tidy, keep them away from things so nothing's touching inside. Obviously, we don't want, you know, conductive material touching anything, so I've been really kind of clever with that and just kept everything neat and tidy use some cable ties use more of our 3m to kind of separate things because the more of that that goes in there the merrier the, the higher you know more absorption of high frequency noise in this chassis the better and the more damping of vibration the better and then obviously we've got here this is this will power our ocxo clock as on it's on our operating system ssd that's obviously installed nice actually installed much better this time around it was installed a bit awkwardly in the other chassis just because the nature of that small that chassis was so it hasn't been without its challenges it hasn't been without its i'll say you can use the word problems i i'm not sure i'm going to do this and i've done it and i've not worked and i've had to work things out so it's taken me a long time to get this done but i <laughs> and i i'll tell you i'm shattered but I, I want to put it in. I want to make sure everything's working okay. It shouldn't take too long to do that. But no, I'm, I'm actually really happy. Look at look at it. It looks lovely, doesn't it? It's a really nice looking product now. And, and to be honest, it actually looks more professional. When you looked at the old inside of the old one, yeah, the one that I built years ago, it was an absolute mess and stuff. But it, obviously, it was, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't building it to, to put on camera. I was just building it right. That will do just to really sound good. So this one actually looks, I think, looks quite nice very functional now in what it is and to be honest everything's worked out absolutely perfectly i was worried about some of the diy cables like these that i use i was worried about how i was going to run this out of the chassis and i was worried about quite a few things but i needn't be because everything's gone over into this chassis much better than it was in the old one now if you look at the serial ata cables we're using our jcap reference serial ATA, ata cable from our operating system ssd link into our motherboard that installed lovely now i'm using the old jcat the first jcat serial ata cable of about four years ago now to link the motherboard to our storage and music ssd now back years ago someone done some testing the guy who sells a lot of these products did a lot of testing and he found that serial ata three giga second ports sound better than six gigasecond ports which is wonderful except mine are in this one are quite close together so again that's all a little bit awkward it's all you know you just hope when it all fires up obviously it all works because it all works it's going to work forever so yeah i'm really happy with how it's gone you know I, I can't do i can't give people you know this is how you build a pc advice that's not that's not what i'm here for so if you don't know how to build a pc i, I can't help you do that but if you do know how to build a pc then hopefully you can look at this look at what i've done look at the parts that i've used look at some of the extras that i've put in here like the 3m ab5100s now obviously you can't buy that anymore I mean, i bought loads of that uh years ago and i've still got a load of it here spare that's actually probably going to end up inside the oppo 203 but i didn't put it in there because i wasn't sure how much i was going to need obviously for this build so you can i think buy a variant of it and if you look at the data that I've put up on the screen and try and find a, a similar product, I think they do a slightly different version of the same thing. It's expensive. It's about £50 a sheet for an A4 sheet. It's expensive, but it's bloody good. And it's you know, it's designed for exactly, not designed for this, but it's, it's designed to do exactly what we want it to do. So it's, it's a great product. And then we've got our JCAT products in there, our CYTA cables, and then power. Power is the big one. So the 400 watt linear power supply, I think to start with, obviously it's going to power the computer, the motherboard, and the CPU. I'm probably going to power the JCAT Femto, JCAT Net Femto from it. Then we've got our other linear power supply, which is going to power our JCAT USB and our uh, OCXO clock. And then we've got our two battery power supplies that's going to power our SSDs, just the main SSDs. Now, obviously our original big linear power supply, I really want to use that, and I really want to use that to power the Net Femto, but we'll have to see 
we'll have to see how I get on with things. I just want to keep it simple to start with. Just want to get things working. And then once everything's working, I'm happy and some been some hours put on things. Now I can have a little play and a little mess around to work out how I'm going to get the best sound quality from this big investment. You know, not just a big investment of money, which is what it is, but also a big investment in time. So we've got all that to come in the videos coming up. Hopefully this has been helpful to a degree in terms of if you want to take this project on. Now I'm happy to help people to a point but I can't really spend all day giving out you know, PC building advice. If you are a Patreon member, then obviously I will help you, you know, as much as possible, as much as you need. But to everybody else, I'm happy to answer bitty questions and stuff, but I can't really give PC building advice. It's just it's just too time consuming. I've got so much going on. Uh, and that's not me being funny, this is, this is the truth. I've got so much going on. There's only so many hours in the day. So I'm really happy with how this is. I'm really happy with how this looks. Obviously I'm gonna get it installed. Fingers crossed, everything just works. First time, and yeah, we'll, I'll be back to let you know how it's all gone. So yeah, it's been a fun, I don't think it's been a fun day, it's been a long day, and uh, it's probably gonna be a long night. Right, hope you've enjoyed the series so far. There's lots more to come, and I'll be seeing you soon. Take care. Thank you.